Before the clip plays, let's explore Chomsky's general approach to analyzing situations involving violence and power imbalances. He often emphasizes understanding historical context, examining the long-term dynamics of the conflict, including factors like colonialism, land dispossession, and ongoing occupation, recognizing root causes, looking beyond immediate events to analyze the underlying political, economic, and social inequalities that contribute to violence, emphasizing symmetry, critically examining the actions of all parties involved, not just focusing on one side's alleged transgressions, prioritizing nonviolent solutions, advocating for peaceful resolutions through dialogue, international law, and addressing the root causes of the conflict. Now off to this great clip of Nome on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The United States considers Hezbollah a terrorist organization, uh, but the term terrorism is used by the great powers uh, simply to refer to forms of violence of which they disapprove. Uh, so the U.S. was, of course, supporting the Israeli invasions and occupation of southern Lebanon. Uh, Hezbollah was uh, instrumental in uh, driving them out. Uh, so for that reason, they're a terrorist organization. It's an interesting dilemma. Uh, personally, I am very much opposed to Hamas's policies in almost every respect. However, uh, we should recognize that the policies of Hamas are more forthcoming uh, and more conducive to a peaceful settlement than those of the United States or Israel. So, to repeat, the policies, in my view, are unacceptable, but preferable to the policies of the United States and Israel. So, for example, uh, Hamas has uh, called for a long-term indefinite truce on the international border. Uh, that's the, there is a long-standing international consensus, goes back to the, over 30 years, that there should be a two-state political settlement on the international border, the pre-June 1967 border, with minor and mutual modifications. That's the official phrase. Uh, Hamas is willing to accept that as a long-term truce. Uh, the United States and Israel are unwilling even to consider it. Uh, the uh, Hamas is being, uh, the demand on Hamas by the United States and the European Union and Israel, uh, the demand is first that they recognize the state of Israel, actually that they recognize its right to exist. Well, Israel and the United States certainly don't recognize the right of Palestine to exist. Uh, nor recognize any state of Palestine. In fact, they have been acting uh, consistently and uh, uh, to undermine any such possibility. Uh, second condition is that Hamas must renounce violence. Uh, Israel and the United States certainly do not renounce violence. Uh, the third condition is that uh, Hamas accept international agreements. Uh, the United States and Israel reject international agreements. So, though the policies of Hamas are, again, in my view, unacceptable, they happen to be closer to uh, uh, the uh, international consensus on a political, peaceful settlement than those of their antagonists. And it's a reflection of the power of the imperial states, the United States and Europe, that they are able to shift the framework so that the problem appears to be uh, the, uh, Hamas's policies and not the more extreme policies of the United States and Israel. And remember, in, we must remember that in their case, it's not just policies, it's not words, it's actions. Uh, so if we compare the uh, positions of the two sides, uh, all are unacceptable, but uh, those of Hamas are uh, the least unacceptable. So framing the issue this way, is a reflection of the uh, power of the Western states to impose the framework of discussion. It's not something we should accept. As far as uh, September 11th is concerned, I take the position that I've written, continue to. It was, uh, as I wrote immediately, uh, uh, it uh, was one of the most uh, 
uh, horrifying terrorist atrocities uh, ever. It's probably the single worst uh, terrorist atrocity, uh, horrendous crime. Uh, uh, but uh, we should recognize that in the scale of terrorist actions, it is not unusual. Uh, it's, uh, in fact, in Latin America, it's often called the second 9-11, not 9-11. Now, the reason is that uh, uh, on 9-11, on September 11th, 1973, uh, there was an even worse terrorist attack. Uh, in fact, to translate it, let's just imagine uh, September 11th, 2001 was bad enough. But suppose what had happened was this. Uh, suppose that uh, Al-Qaeda had succeeded in attacking the White House, killing the president, installing a military dictatorship, uh, a, a regime of uh, terror and violence, uh, which, which killed 50 to 100. Pardon? ماذا كان حصل؟ ماذا كان حصل؟ well, let's continue. Yeah. Suppose that they had killed 50 to 100,000 people, uh, tortured 700,000, uh, installed a terrorist apparatus that was functioning all over the world to overthrow governments, uh, carry out assassinations, and so on. Suppose that that had happened on September 11th. Well, in fact, it did. Uh, that's what happened on September 11th, uh, 1973, in Chile. Uh, all, the only change I've made is to change the numbers to per capita equivalents. Well, that would have been vastly worse than what actually happened, but it did happen. Uh, that was the U.S.-backed uh, installation of a military dictatorship in uh, Chile, which overthrew and destroyed the uh, oldest uh, a democratic system in Latin America. So that's only one example. There are many others. Uh, so, for example, no. the, uh, so, yes, so t September 11, 2001 was a terrible atrocity. Uh, and it, uh, uh, it, in the West, it's considered unique. And it is, in a sense, unique. It's the first time in hundreds of years that massive terrorism was directed against the West. Uh, however, uh, the West is the source of far worse terrorism and violence directed against others. So yes, we should recognize what happened on September 11th as a crime, as an atrocity, and place it in the context of history. Now, uh, the commissar class in the United States, uh, of whom David Horowitz is an example, <laughs> uh, do not want that picture to be presented, uh, just as their counterparts in the Soviet Union didn't want it to be presented. Well, the first achievement of George Bush after 9-11 was to attack Afghanistan. Uh, let's take a look at what happened. The attack on Afghanistan was carried out uh, for one explicit reason, because the war aim was stated explicitly, according to George Bush, any state that harbors terrorists is a terrorist state and must be treated accordingly by bombing and uh, invasion. Uh, it follows from that that George Bush is calling for the bombing of the United States. Uh, the United States harbors terrorists, violent terrorists, uh, who are regarded by the FBI and the Justice Department as terrorists. Uh, one of the worst of them is uh, Orlando Bosch, uh, a uh, anti-Cuban terrorist. Uh, accused by the FBI of about 30 acts of terrorism, some in the United States, uh, the blowing up of a Cubana airliner, killing 73 people. This is part of the 45-year U.S. terrorist war against no. Cuba. Uh, his father, George Bush I, uh, gave Bosch a presidential pardon so that he could remain in the United States uh, over the objections of the Justice Department, which regarded him as a threat to U.S. national security. And I can go on from there. Uh, but the main terrorists are the ones who carry out the acts in Washington. أنت يهودي وتعرف عن نفسك بأنك كنت ناشطا صهيونيا في شبابك ويتهمونك بأنك معاد للسامية. كيف تعاد تدافع عن نفسك؟ دقيقة واحدة. Well, actually, that that notion has origins in the Bible, and I'm happy to accept the uh, criticism. The origins in the Bible are King uh, Ahab, 
who was the epitome of evil in the Bible. And he condemned the prophet Elijah for being a hater of Israel. The reason Elijah was a hater of Israel was because he was criticizing the acts of the evil king. And the king, like totalitarians throughout history, identified the state himself with the people, the country, and the culture. So if you criticize state policy, you're a hater of Israel, or a hater of America, or a hater of Russia, or any other country you like. So yes, I'm delighted to be in that company. ولكن ألا تعتقد الأمر طبيعي عندما تصف الممارسات الإسرائيلية أو الشبه الإسرائيليين بهتلر؟ ألا تعتقد وصفك بمعاداة سامية أمرا طبيعيا هنا؟ I have never described Israeli policies as being like Hitler or anyone else's policies as being. Instead of simply presenting his views, it's more valuable to encourage critical thinking and engagement with the complexities of the conflict. Here are some ways to do that. Explore diverse perspectives. Read or watch materials from a variety of sources, including Palestinian, Israeli, and international voices. Focus on understanding. Seek to understand the motivations and experiences of all parties involved, even those with whom you disagree. Engage in respectful dialogue. Discuss the conflict with others in a constructive and non-judgmental way, focusing on finding common ground and potential solutions. I hope you have liked the video and give the channel a subscribe. Take care and bye-bye.